This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, in the previous two lectures, we looked at measures of average, the mean, the median, the mode. In this lecture, we're going to look at measures of dispersion, which you'll see in uh, paragraph five of the uh, notes. Uh, you, you need to be aware of something called the range, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. Well, to explain what they are and what we mean by dispersion, uh, I'll look at, I'll explain with the examples, examples four and five. And first of all, example four, it says for the information in example two, calculate these four measures. So if you look back to example two, he said a company has recorded the number of complaints received per week over the past 13 weeks and has produced the following table. So if I write it down again, the number of complaints, the observations X, if you remember, was 0, 1, 2 or 3. The frequency, the number of times they happened, or F, was 1, 6, 4 and 2. So in total, 13 weeks, one week there was no complaint, six weeks there was one complaint, and so on. Uh, and uh, if you remember, when we did example two, we did work out, and I'm going to need it shortly, the arithmetic mean, or x bar. And if you look back, we got an average, a mean, of 1.54 complaints. Now that's fine, the average is 1.54, but what's also going to be of interest to know is the overall spread of the observations. You know, were the observations all very, very close to 1.54? Or were there observations all over the place? You know, anything between 0 and 100 or something. But again, the average came to 1.54. So what we mean by a measure of dispersion is a measure of the spread. Are all the observations very close together or are they spread over a big range? And the easiest, the most obvious measure is the range. And I won't write down the definition because it's in the notes, but the range is simply the difference between the highest observation and the lowest. So here, the highest observation was three complaints, the lowest was zero, and so the range, the difference between the two, is three complaints. Now that's fine, it's a very obvious measure, you know, the bigger the range, the bigger the spread is of the observations, but it can be heavily distorted. I mean, just suppose we'd actually looked, I don't know, at 50 observations and 49 of them were 0, 1, 2 or 3. But then one of those 50 observations was way different. You know, perhaps there were 50 complaints. But something went really strange for one of them. So again, just imagine there are 50 observations. 49 of them are all really close together. It's just one extreme that's a bit off. But we'd say, oh, the range 50 minus 0 is 50. And it gives the wrong impression. You know, right, this is the difference between the highest and lowest. But I say again, if 49 of them are all very close, it's very misleading to let it be distorted by that one extreme. And so... Uh, what is much more uh, sensible and certainly a lot more important is to look at something called the variance. And what we do here, I'll write the formula down in a moment, but we say, well, we know what the average is, 1.54. Let's see on average how far the observations are away from that average. We take each observation and we say, how far away was it from the average? Well, if there are no complaints, surely that's 1.54 below the average. X minus X bar minus 1.54. 
one complaint at the minus 0 0.54, 0 0.54 below the average. Two complaints, two minus 1.55 plus 0.46 above the average, and three complaints plus 1.46. Now we could average those. The only trouble is, try it if you don't believe me, but you see, there's one observation that's 1.54 below, six observations minus 0.54, four observations, but you could multiply up and divide by the total and get an average. But because of the pluses and minuses, you'd end up with an average of zero. Have a go if you don't believe me. And so to remove that problem, what we do is square these differences. Because you should know that if you square a negative number, you get a positive number. The sign of problem disappears. So 1.54 squared is 2.37. I'll keep it to two decimal places. 0.54 squared is 0 0.29. 0 0.46 squared, 0 0.21. And finally, 1.46 squared, 2.13. And again, they're all positive. Squaring a negative number is a positive number. And we then take the average of those. So just as we were doing before with the arithmetic mean, we multiply each of them by the frequency. And then to get the average, we'll divide by the total. So 1 times 2.37 is 2.37. 6 times 0.29 is 1.74, uh, 2 times point, uh, sorry, 4 times 0 0.21, 0 0.1, 7 uh, and 2 times 2.13, 4.26. So in each case, I've multiplied, uh, I've squared them, multiply by the frequency. So to get the average, let's add them up and divide by the total number. So 2.37 plus 1.74 plus 0.1, start again, 2.37 plus 1.74, 0.17, 4 The total is 8.54. That, if you remember, your sigma is sigma f x minus x bar squared. Uh, to get the average, divide by the total of the frequencies sigma f, and this gives us what we call the variance. So the variance is the total of these squared differences divided by the total number of observations, which here is 8.54 divided by 13 which is point six six. So there we are, that's the variance. It is a measure of spread in that surely, think about it, the bigger the spread of the observations, the bigger those differences would be, the bigger the squares of the differences, the bigger the average. It is a measure of the spread. The only one thing, though, is, or one problem, if you like, with the variance, is that the observations were all numbers of complaints. The differences was the same units, numbers of complaints. But we've squared it and taken the average of the squares. And so, what is this? It's sort of 0.66 squared complaints. And so although that is the variance, much more commonly, 
is something called the standard deviation. The symbol for it is sigma. And all it is, as I said, because the variance is like squared complaints, to get back to the same units, we take the square root. And so for this example, the square root of, oops, 0.66 is, let's size that again, um, the square root 0.66 is 0 0.81. And we are back to the same units. It is complaints or whatever the observations happen to be. Uh, but that's the standard deviation, and you'll see in the next chapter, the standard deviation uh, is absolutely vital. But regardless, there we are. So the range, the difference between the highest and lowest, the variance a bit messier, square the differences from the mean, get the average, the standard deviation, same exercise, but we then take the square root, the square root of the variance, and so here it's 0.81. Uh, just one more, it's a pretty easy one here, uh, but that is a measure of spread 0.81, but as to whether that's big or small, Depends really on what it was we were looking at. I mean, here the complaints are near zero, one, two, three, so they're all small, so 0 0.81 is reasonably big by comparison. But had they been going, oh, anything from naught to 100, 0 0.81 is really tiny. And so it's difficult to say whether 0 0.81 is a big spread or a small spread. And so one way we could check is looking at the final one which is the coefficient of variation. And okay, it's another formula for, to, for you to learn, but it's a very easy one. Uh, I don't think it's too much of a problem, uh, but the coefficient of variance is quite simply um, the standard deviation. divided by the arithmetic mean. So here the standard deviation point 0.81, the arithmetic mean was, what was it, we had it earlier, 1.54. And so the coefficient of variation Point five three. As it gives an order of magnitude. Okay, so there we are. Those are the measures you need. Range, easy. Uh, the variance, a bit of messing around. Check you've got it, but otherwise not too big a problem. Standard deviation, easy, just the square root of the variance. And the coefficient of variation, standard deviation over arithmetic mean. Uh, that, were, uh, that exercise, there were discrete variables, if you remember. The complaints were 0, 1, 2, 3. Was there a 4? I can't remember. No, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, the next example, for completeness, I will do it with uh, continuous variables. Um, the example, example 3. But it's exactly the same logic, the same approach. So, so you don't get bored, we'll stop this one, but the next one I'll work through example five. So look at the same measures based on the table in example three.